All right, let's move on. Let's talk about space. Ooh, you know I love it. Let me spin this here UFO because we're talking about space. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about we're talking about space now. Check this this is out. I got two different stories here. Okay, very cool stuff. All right, carbon ring molecules tied to life were found in space for the first time. Okay, we didn't find life, but we found some of the keys to life. Right? Carbon. We're carbon. I'm carbon. You're carbon. This is carbon-based everything. Check this out. It was discovered in an interstellar cloud. The components are more abundant than predicted. Hmm. Complex carbon-bearing molecules that could help explain how life got started have been identified in space for the first time. These molecules, called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PH PAHs, consist of several linked hexagonal rings of carbon with hydrogen atoms at the edges. Astronomers have suspected for decades that these molecules are abundant in space, but oh, I just lost myself because I, uh, but none have been directly spotted before. Simpler molecules with a single ring of carbon have been seen before, but we're now excited to see that we're able to detect these larger PHAs for the first time in space, says astrochemist Brett McGuire of MIT, whose team reports the discovery in the March 19th science. Studying these molecules and other like them could help scientists understand how the chemical precursors to life might get started in space. Carbon is such a fundamental part of chemical reactions, especially uh, reactions leading to life's essential molecules, McGuire says. This is our window into a huge reservoir of them. Since the 1980s, astronomers have seen a mysterious infrared glow coming from the spots within our galaxy and others. Many suspected that the glow comes from PHAs, or PAHs, but could not identify a specific source. The signals have several different PAHs overlap too much to tease any of them apart, like a choir blending so well the ear can't pick out individual voices. Instead of searching the infrared signals for a single voice, McGuire and colleagues turned to radio waves where different PAHs sing different songs. The team trained the powerful Green Bank Telescope in West Virginia on TMC-1, a dark cloud about 430 light years from Earth near the constellation Taurus. Previously, McGuire had discovered that the cloud contains ben, um, benzonitrile, a molecule made of a single carbon ring. So he thought it was a good place to look for more complicated molecules. The team detected one and two cyano, uh, cyanoplephaline, two ringed molecules with 10 carbons, eight hydrocarbons, and one nitrogen atom. The concentration was fairly diffuse, McGuire says. If you fill the entire, it, the inside of your average compact car with gas uh, from TMC1, you'd have less than 10 molecules of PAH we detected. But it was a lot more than the team expected. The cloud contains between 100,000 and 1 million times more PAHs than theoretical models predicted should have, or that it should. It's insane. That's way too much, McGuire says. There are two ways that PAHs are thought to form in space. Out of the ashes of dead stars, or by direct chemical reactions in inter interstellar space. Since TMC-1 is just beginning to form stars, McGuire expect, expected that any PAHs it contains ought to have been built by direct chemical reactions in space, but that scenario can't account for all the PAH molecules the team found. There's too much to be explained easily by stellar ash, too. That means something is probably missing from astrochemists' theory on how PAHs can form in space. We're working in uncharted territory here, he says, which is exciting. Identifying PAHs in space is a big thing, says astrochemist Alexandra uh, Alessandra uh, Ricca of the SETI Institute in Mountain View, California, who is not involved in the new study. The work is the first one that has shown that these PAH molecules actually do exist in space before it was just a hypothesis. Rika's group is working on a database of infrared PAH signals that the James Webb te Telescope slated to launch in October can look for. All this is going to be very helpful, 
for JWST and the research in carbon in the universe. I, I actually have a whole segment I've been meaning to do on the James Webb telescope, which was supposed to be in space five, six years ago, back in 2015. And it's just been pushed back and pushed back. And it's kind of a mess. And it's probably better because it probably would have failed. This is a long story. But I am very much looking forward for the James Webb telescope to, to get into space. All right. Now, this is the other article I have, which is equally cool. Okay. Something also exciting. Scientists shocked at water and organic material found on an asteroid for the first time. This is, this is a separate story, but equally exciting. Because this is the kind of stuff that we're going to keep finding until we find actual life. Right? Scientists have found water and organic material on the surface of an asteroid sample collected from the solar system the first time that such material has been found on an asteroid. The sample, which was only a single grain, came from the asteroid Itokawa by the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency JAXA, first Hayabusa mission in 2010. It shows both water and organic material that originate not from an alien world, but from the asteroid itself. Researchers from Royal Holloway, University of London, suggest that the asteroid had been evolving for billions of years by incorporating the liquid and organic material in the same way Earth does. The asteroid has weathered extreme heat, dehydration, and shattering, but managed to reform and hydrate using material it picked up. The study also shows that S-type asteroids, which are the most common ones that uh, come to Earth, can contain raw components to life of life. This could rewrite our knowledge of the history of life on Earth, which previously focused on carbon-rich C-type asteroids. The Hayabusa mission was a robotic spacecraft developed by Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency to return samples from a small near-Earth asteroid named Itokawa. For detailed analysis in laboratories on Earth, Dr. Queenie Chan from the Department of Earth Scientists at Royal Holloway said in a statement, After being studied in great detail by an international team of researchers, our analysis in a, of a single grain nicknamed Amazon has preserved both primitive, unheated, and processed heated organic matter within 10 microns, a thousandth of a centimeter of distance. Now that is freaking cool if you ask me the organic matter that has been heated indicated that the asteroid had been heated to over 600 degrees celsius in the past the presence of the unheated organic matter very close to it means that in the fall of primitive organics arrived on the surface of itokawa after the asteroid had cooled down the scientists research entitled organic matter and water from asteroid itokawa were published in this journal scientific reports these findings are really exciting as they reveal complex details of an asteroid's history and how its evolutionary or evolution pathway is so similar to that of the prebiotic Earth, Dr. Chan added. It is hoped that the analysis of the sample will set the groundwork for more detailed analysis of other samples. JAXA's Hayabusa 2 mission returned piece of the asteroid um, Ryugu last year, bringing back a piece of a celestial rock that was only 30, or 38 centimeters in diameter. In 2019, samples from the asteroid Bennu revealed that it was in fact older than scientists previously thought, providing a new look on how the evolution of the solar system developed. Observations of Bennu also con confirmed the presence of widespread and abundant hydrated materials, as well as surprising presence of large boulders. This is just going to keep happening. The more we go into space, the more we make space a normal thing. We're going to be finding this kind of stuff all over the place until we find living bacteria, living organisms, some, some space tardigrade. Like, who knows what we're going to find? But we are going to find something out there. I'm telling you. And side note, it's kind of cool. Lego is uh, launching a space shuttle discovery. I'm such a nerd when it comes to space, and I grew up with Legos, so kind of excited about that. I'm probably not going to get it, but who knows? Maybe I'll find a spot for it somewhere.